very good evening a warm welcome to what is not the dan really likes mine studio as you can see instead it's the uh, slightly murky surrounds and that's my laptop entirely of my very favorite restaurant in the entire world uh, mainly because it's open i'm getting to it uh, and i haven't been here for what feels like years but if it's a, a happy day for me it's got to be a really emotional one for the enormously good looking gentleman sitting beside me uh, because david higgs after five months of terrorizing the internet of being the coolest guy on all of instagram and of sending single mothers around the world into states of near hysteria you're suddenly back in the shop did it feel like it might never happen yeah it, i can just i just want to tell you i want to start off by saying it just like it actually was unexpectedly quite emotional you know um we've been prepping for the last couple of days we're getting getting ready and and getting ourselves sorted and then uh, this morning this afternoon i came in checked on everything went quickly went to saint and when i walked back in this evening and and the lights were dimmed and it was nice and warm and the music was playing and the fires were going flipping out choked up i tell you um and then yeah we you know yeah it's very it's just great to be open again it's lovely to see my team back and uh yeah, we're ready to we ready to rock and roll. That's for sure. And that was probably the the first part that struck me. Yes, I'm back at Marvel. Yes, it looks amazing. But then I saw. Uh, this is going to sound like me being daft, but I could feel the smiles through the masks because yeah. they were all in place. But everybody just so happy to be back. And for you to see those people and people who, uh, if you aren't aware, David has been supporting enormously through lockdown through all of your various fundraising endeavors to now see these guys to know that they've made it through the storm and you're back yeah. here that must be so rewarding yeah i know it is and uh it's um you know we, we will never really understand the hardship that that is that has happened over the last five years uh, five months and, and what's what's still to come it feels like five of, years it does feel like five years <laughs> and what's still to come but um but you know these these guys have have built this business with us you know the, the least we could do was try and look after them as, as much as we, we could you know obviously the big thing was for us to be able to reopen again i mean you've got you you know so it was a it was a it was a it was a juggle but but here we are <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the staff back within the next hour or two what's behind us is going to be a seething mass of very excited diners the regulars you have you've got so many of them that's going to be a, another quite emotional part of this evening i uh I don't know if anybody saw, but uh, um, today on uh, on Instagram, I posted I got a I got a gift from somebody, and uh, it was a it was an update on thirty seconds, you know, and and it's it, just to put it all into context. I play thirty seconds after I, I do the the cocktail hour on Fridays, and uh, this little community over the last five months formed, you know, and and we play these games together, and we have a drink together, and we chat and so forth. And what would happen is I was I would either drink way too much. And I would start mixing up the cards. I would ask, start asking the same questions, and, <laughs> and people would just rag me. Anyway, so I got sent a little box of the updated, uh, the updated thirty seconds. You know, and, and you know, these are the people that have supported us through lockdown. These are the people that have always come to Marvel, that have that have been here, that are guests of ours. And uh, the first people that walked through the door, you know, were our guests that that you know she celebrated her, her birthday two weeks ago, and now she's here to to celebrate properly. And then. Yeah, it's special. Yeah, for sure, it's special. Just a quick bit of clarity there. Uh, cocktail hour followed by 30 seconds with David Higgs. That is not a Tinder date with a hot chef. It is really cocktails followed by the game 30 seconds. Uh, people coming in, your, your guests are all looking forward to the food and probably facing the same challenge that I know I'm going to. What on earth do I eat my first meal back? Now, I've got no doubt that while this is not fine dining, you've produce something in Marvel that is terrific food, but it's approachable and it's engaging and there's a real sense of fun to it. You've probably gone all out tonight to make sure that you kick off the menu with a bang. So what should I be looking at on our opening night menu, Chef David? <laughs> no, look, I think, I, I, I hate to say this, um, but you know, obviously meat is the, is the, big, is the big thing here. Um, however, the one thing that everybody would always come back to Marvel for is the octopus, you know? Mm. Uh, and the octopus is really a, a, a very special dish. So uh, we're in the process of changing that. So uh, it'll only be that like like it is now for the next for the next couple of weeks, but um, or next couple of days actually. So, you know, a couple of changes coming into play and, and uh, uh, you know, so yeah, for me the octopus will always be a will always be a big uh, a big one. And uh, yeah, the um, from the meat side, the ribeye is always a winner. You know, it's just 
we do this reduction of tomato that we cook with you know tons of garlic and, and uh, you know just it cooks for about six hours on the stove still it's like a tomato mess almost that we serve with that meat you know so it's tomato sauce really. steak and tomato sauce what can i say <laughs> uh, there are many things that i'm sure you were looking forward to today you've already mentioned seeing your colleagues you've mentioned seeing the new guests uh, you've mentioned just having a, the, the restaurant full up but i would venture that what you've been looking forward to more than ever is not having to do the washing up today. <laughs> it's exactly that. <laughs> all, all being hands on in the in the pots and the pans. No, I, I um, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely not going to miss the washing <laughs> up. <laughs> all right, let's let's talk a little bit about wine because this is in theory a wine show, although careers yeah. off track on a regular basis. Uh, and this is the first glass of wine I'm having back at Marvel uh, since the doors were closed many months ago. We're kicking off with a white wine. I'll, uh, I'll let you tell everybody what we're drinking and why you selected this from the 270,000 bottles of wine in the cellar. Yeah. So the, the Roll um, Grenache Blanc is, is what we're drinking. Um, I'm not much of a white wine drinker, to be honest with you. I'm, I've always I, I enjoy my Shannons and so forth. But, um, but I love the, it's a beautiful mix of fruit sort of acidity on this, you know. So you can feel on the back of your, of your, your kista, this, you know, if you pass the kista, um, you get this, this lovely uh, watering of the mouth, you know, this, this acidity that comes through. And that's what makes it such a great fruit wine as well. Uh, I start off with, and uh, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy this one a lot. So. Hmm. Oh, it's a great selection. If I go around, Come down really like wine next Monday along with Peter Allen Finlayson as we talk to the new role releases and they are terrific. I know you've got the kitchen to pretend to look like you're actually doing something, you're just watching everybody else, all the hard work. Uh, before we let you go and uh, the drag along, because you're claiming some Elliot to come and join me for glass number two, uh, it's a quick hello to Angelique Kubelakis. So glad to see Marvel is open, yay! Says Angelique. Watching and it's lovely to have you uh, on the show in Sweden. Thank you. Uh, we've also got uh, Mr. Sherwood. Mr. Shady. Can't wait to rock marble again. Hopefully, with you boys and Mr. Kilpin in tow. Love the food. Well, I can tell you that the Mr. Kilpin that you mentioned is Derek Kilpin, and he will be with us on the show a little later on. He'll be joining us as we Aku and then a whole pile of other people there. Janet, uh, Gerard Holden, saying he's hungry. That's a new Gerard. Keith <laughs> Foley saying hello. And Daniel Bjorka saying, David, he's your best. I'm not sure what, but we'll take it across the board. Uh, Marta Bello Matsamai, welcome back. Daniel Bocas is there. Tanya Basaki, uh, Roxanne Harley, and this is probably a good one. And uh, many celebrations missed during lockdown, uh, says Roxanne. Can't wait to come back to Marvel. I'm an inbound tourism and industry still at a standstill and will be until our international borders open. All the very best. It's an important question to ask you before you slip off into the culinary night. The restaurants have been hit, have been hit hard, and they've been hit hard right across the country. You're in a great position that you put really, a but even you guys had enormous struggles. How confident is David Higgs about our broader restaurant industry coming back? And, and how big are the challenges for Marvel and Saint, which of course opens tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> that's a tricky question. I, I, I've been one to try to keep it positive a lot of the last couple of months and, uh, and really try and see the positive. I really believe that it's going to be tricky. Um, I think the next the, the next couple of months will be will be okay. I just don't know what's going to happen for January, February, March. You know, Dan. I think that's a difficult one for us. If, if we don't start getting uh, getting the tourism and especially business uh, coming in, I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be quite tricky. So you know, we we, we just hope that that you know we can only hope. That's that's all we can really do. We we'll make sure that we, the, the offering is good. Um, but we always, you know, we always stay positive. As I said, we always try to keep, always try to keep positive. Well, there's a really positive feel to Marvel this evening. It is fully booked tonight, so don't come dashing down if you don't have a reservation. Uh, there are a few gaps next week, the week thereafter. Uh, Dear Holden has an octopus control symptom. Uh, the man down Holden Mads down in Franchuk. Uh, Emma Keller talking for the octopus and pork belly and Bukasa Jules Kalonji. So proud of you, the best restaurant ever in <laughs> South Africa. Uh, David, you've got work to do. I have more guests to chat. You ought to wait start off some lovely Donald Ralph, some great food later on. But more importantly, welcome back. 
and uh, of all the things you've done, the entertainment you've given us, the last you provided, the, uh, the regal Instagram feed, uh, the big thing is the work you've done in supporting your staff, supporting charities through lockdown, which has been as uh, as memorable and as impactful as anything you've ever done. So, uh, keep an on that, and I'll be there later on tonight. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Uh, stay safe, and uh, yeah, keep on the keep the masks up. <laughs> Indeed, even when you're reading, which will be challenged. <laughs> I'll make it. All right, let's go to find Vickers and send him my way. A rundown of our cast for this evening. Uh, so Vickers will be joining us. We're also speaking to Gary Kiriaku, the co-owner of Marvel. His wife, Irene, did all of the day. If you've been to Marvel, you've liked what you've seen. If you've been to Satan, liked what you've seen. That's the magic touch of Irene Kiriaku and her husband, Gary, will be with us. We also have Derek Kilpin wandering around somewhere in the restaurant, a man who had great domains. We had two of his clients on the show last night, Peter Volsa, as well as Duncan Savage, and then the Joburg foodie. We are trying to find him. I can't believe he wasn't here when I arrived. He normally lives under a table or in a cupboard somewhere, uh, but he'll be with us as well as we run through a selection of different wines, including a couple of bubbles, and that's the one I'll be sharing with Vickers in just a moment. Uh, some bubbles from Colma, because today is international Cup Classic Day. It is a busy, busy, busy day of food and wine, but particularly wine and in particular the bubbles. And we'll be having those bubbles uh, in celebration of International Cup Classic Day. And if you would like to a lesson in the extended art of bubbles, and in this case, removing a top of a bottle with a saber, then at six o'clock on the Stienberg Instagram page, uh, you can see a London Basson, the cellar master down at Stienberg, giving you a lesson in sobrage on Cup Classic Day. Right, I can see Vickers is striding in. I've also got a glimpse of uh, Steve, the Joburg foodie, looking very John Travolta in Greasish, and I'll have him on the show just a little later. He's got a leather jacket, uh, which is a lot more inexpensive and easy to recycle. Right, welcome to another of my favorites. You will have seen him on the show many times before because he's uh, jumping ever so slightly. We'll be we socially distant, but far enough back. And uh, I'm gonna finish up just before we jump into the bubbles and say welcome back to you. Great call with David there. That Donovan Roll, Grand Blanc, beautiful wine. Yes, and there's a point that, uh, I mean, by the wine, by the glass at Marvel, it's just such a versatile wine that it works well with all the starters. It's something mm -hmm. different that you wouldn't uh, usually see by the glass and you know, it's just absolutely stunning. <laughs> well, we, uh, we certainly enjoy that, both David and myself, and we're about to enjoy some bubbles. Talk about them in just a second. Let's talk about the last five months. What has Victor's been up to? How have you survived not making people happy with wineless choices for the last stretch? Well, we've uh, tried to keep it as legal as possible without trying to bootleg. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, doing tastings from home, doing some cool Zoom tastings. Uh, it's really interesting as well. And then, yeah, doing the times we could sell out by one or two farms, uh, just try and get some wine out to private clients, people who even want to go to liquor shops. So yeah, just try and. Get, get 35 cases in the audience and start driving. <laughs> <laughs> how, how about the personal growth of Vickers? A lot of people I've spoken to, if I look at the musicians we've had on our charity concert series at Element House, they've spoken about writing new music and thinking about their musical direction. I've spoken to comedians who've written new shows. I've done a wine course trying to educate myself a little more. Has there been that element to you in the last five months? Uh, yeah, look, a little, little bit of uh, reading up uh, because we thought uh, best somebody in South Africa was going to have this year, but it's been postponed to next yeah uh, so it's also a nice kind of time to just sit at home and just go over your notes again you've actually got the time to do it but then also um having limited a wide amount of wine at home focusing on other spirits uh trying different kinds of liqueurs and so on it's so about grappers that were at home and tequila so this is a kind of experiencing more the, the spirits side of thing brushing up on my cocktails those are always important competitions so yeah looked at all kind of, of different spectrums focusing on some coffee as i can get my hands on so yeah it's been a busy, busy year. If you don't know, Vic is a South African sommelier of the year and a man with an almost supernatural gift for understanding and determining wine. The Bubbles Await, it's International Cup Classique Day, just one of the many wines on the wine list. Have there been any tweaks to that wine list? You've been playing around so with we've it? Kept it uh, pretty normal for now. Um, we're going to see basically new rates are coming up now, sort of vintages coming out. The Sauvignon Blancs have all released uh, 2020. So we're waiting on Shen Blancs now. It should be. Should be be out shortly so we're just waiting to see what's happening there and what cool stuff is coming out and uh, the psalms are eager so yeah they've already gave me a, a whole short list of samples i need to try and grab from the farms to try and see what we can sneak on but yeah it's also just like getting back into it i mean we haven't sat together as a group of some of the years or teams uh, tasting wines together but there's 
There's going to be probably some cool stuff coming on as well, and also some stuff we we might have the mindset of sites. So yeah, looking forward to that. So uh, Vic is look like a delightful guy. He's very sweet, very friendly. He's actually a horrible man because every time I come here, he finds some complete oddity. He puts it in a glass, gives it to me. I try and make an educated guess, and then he announces very loudly to the entire restaurant just how wrong I've got it. So all I'm going to do is say this is definitely cutlassy. Tell me what I'm drinking here, Vic, because uh, so it's a celebration. Is probably one of uh, my favorite bubbles at the moment. Uh, it's the Colman Brut, uh, so it's a light blue label. Um, made by Paul Herbert, who used to be winemaker at the Lute, uh, which we'll probably see about later on the show as well, wine from the Lute coming up. Um, that's the wine, beautiful kind of light blue label. Uh, Paul really focuses much on producing only uh, Cactus Seek uh, at Colman, so there's no still wines there. They're mainly super Cactus Seek focused. And it's just a beautiful dry style. So it's predominantly shot with a bit of Pinot, uh, or sort of actually half and half, 60, 40. Um, spends about two and a half years on the lease, um, but it's not a super heavy kind of MCC. I mean, it's something nice just for an aperitif. Uh, if you're sitting at the bar, you're at marble, looking for the sunset uh, going down. This is just something you can just sip on. It's it's nice and light. It's elegant. It's easy. Um, this is one of my favorite bubbles at the moment. I can see I add half a dozen oysters. You'll have a very happy pickers. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, oysters, this just goes hand in hand. Definitely. It's been an enormously tough time for the wine trade. We spoke to David a little earlier about the hammering the restaurant industry has taken. The wine farmers, the distributors, the, the whole wine world has been social media and talking about wine and celebrating it. And that's fantastic. But uh, there's so much that needs to be done to try and get the industry back on its feet. I asked David how confident he was about the South African restaurant trade. How's Vic is feeling about the South African wine industry? Uh, yeah, I think I'm very worried. Um... I mean, it's it's been really hard for the farms. Uh, some farms have, have, have phoned me and said, "Vickers, can we can you give can give you a discount at the restaurant?" I said, "I think we all in this together. Um, let's rather just try and, and 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 keep the prices the same, just to keep everyone afloat. Uh, I wouldn't want a discounted rate or something. And I think you must. I mean, there is the international market that makes great wines, but I just think we for now we just got to try and stick to our local guns. And I mean, South Africa makes fantastic wines. Uh, and just try and drink what's lucky and local." which we do very proudly and very enthusiastically on Dan Really Likes Wine. Uh, the wine list here is great fun. What I love about the wine list is it's only plenty there, but it's not one of these 812-page phone books that you do sometimes get. People coming along, they are coming out for dinner. There's four of them. They're looking for a bottle of wine, a bottle of red. Give us something just a little quirky, a little different, something they probably haven't had that we'll find on your wine list at the moment. Uh, so we've got some some cool old Samuel, uh, which I like to experiment with, uh, which is quite cool. There's some 2010, or might be 09, 09, Clan Constantia Sauvignon Blanc, which is something a bit around the corner as well. We've got some 09 Shannon as well um, from Bellingham, some cool stuff. It's the old wine series from Elgin. Um, it's kind of these quirky kind of wines that you'll pick up and uh, that you don't really see. Uh, which is quite cool, and I like to port blinds for customers. If you get those quirky kind of customers on the red side, uh, I mean, there's some some cool varietals running around, like straight Turiga, straight Tintas coming out, uh, which also some cool stuff. And then you also have some older red stuff as well. I mean, you've got some older Mielis, which are quite cool. The Thelema O2 caps are drinking well. Um, yeah, so there's some older vintages as well, which you try and keep back and not sell too quickly. Um, but yeah, and there's some new stuff as well. That's something new around the block. Um, from cool quirky producers that you haven't heard of as well. We also trying to sneak onto this and just try and keep it as interesting as possible. So this is the problem when you ask a sommelier a question like that. You ask them for two wines, they give you 112, but they are 112 fantastic wines. And for me, it's such a great part of dining, of eating out, and of spending time with people like Vickers. Not just the knowledge, but the enthusiasm with which you are introduced to so many different wines. And even me as Someone who has a wine show never encountered before, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Vickers puts on my table later on this evening. Yeah, you've got a busy night ahead of you. You've got plenty of wine to serve. Yeah. Uh, so happy National International Cup Day, yeah, which I presume means you can drink South African Cup Classic all over the world as opposed to Cup Classic being made everywhere. Um, so cheers, enjoy. Uh, I'll ask you, if you will, to find your uh, Greek head of security and uh, send him in. Fantastic. And uh, Gary Kirak will be joining us, but uh, Vickers, thank Perfect. you very, Just very much actually. indeed. Now, the head sommelier at the Marble and Saint Group does a terrific, terrific job, and he's got a near forensic knowledge and understanding of wine. And in fact, as we speak, uh, Vickers will be bringing our wine, and here is the aforementioned Greek head of security. <laughs> Good evening. Gary Kiriakou. The can is there. What's he say? Oh, it's a, if you thought, hold on, that doesn't quite sound like a language I understand. So <laughs> Gary and I are seventh cousins twice removed by marriage, uh, because Gary's 
a proper Greek, and I married one. So it gives us a, a space, a space that we've enjoyed together a lot. We have, we love have. Food, nice to see you, love of wine. It's good to be back. I can see Thank the smile you. on your yeah, face. It's been a, it's been a long five challenging, months. but yeah, we're back. You know, it's, it's one of those days that we're back, and I'm excited. I'll ask you the same question I asked David. Uh, he uh, said five years by mistake instead of five months. It was a very Freudian slip because it yes. feels like five years. Did it feel at times like you might never get the restaurants back up and running? Not really. I thought I knew we were going to open, but just a timing issue. Um, I expected about three months. They said three years <laughs> in Davis' <laughs> years, um, and it just carried on a bit. Right? Just like the uncertainty, I think that that kills you a bit. You know, yeah. That's the, the like the, the the monotony of day by day. What's happening? You know. Uh, you know the news. You watch news. You, you know, you, you're in that um, call it a, a spin. It's the hamster wheel. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But now we're back, and I'm I'm excited, and I feel very really positive. You know, just to be back and seeing customers back in the on, on the seats there, enjoying themselves. It's it's, it's a relief. I'm sure it is. I'm not surprised you're positive though, because we've got to know each other through the restaurant. In fact, here's our wine. Thank you, Vickers. We'll try that in just a moment. Um, we've got to know each other through the restaurant. And I remember when David Higgs first took me on a bike ride, which I hated, and during it, he told me that he met this Greek guy and they were going to do a restaurant. And immediately I thought, oh, he's met some con artist. He's going to yeah. fleece him for everything. Then he said, no, <laughs> the guy actually wants to be involved in a restaurant. No? You got these? No, no, but he loves food. He's Greek. No, this is a disaster. Well, I have to apologise comprehensively because not only have you been one of the best things that's ever happened to David, but I've met very few people in the industry as a whole, let alone people who've had no experience before, other than just eating out and ordering off a menu. Food. They've got so stuck in, and yeah, I see you walking the floor. I see you in the kitchen. I see you engaging. This is a real passion project. I enjoy it. I mean. It it was one of those passion projects that I wanted to bring to life, and I did it. David was the perfect partner. I mean, we get along so well, and we did it together. And it's 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 nice walking the floor, seeing the customers, brings me joy. You know, wine. You know, it's it's, it's what makes people, people happy. You know, I'm really I'm really chuffed. Uh, like it's 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 part of the fabric, the relationship that you two have, and you bounce off each other so well. But you're probably as influential as you be. You're probably only the second most important Kiriakou to have an impact on oh, this restaurant. Only the second, okay. <laughs> because as we look out behind us, and that's not absolutely clear, but if you've been to the restaurant before, you look at the website. Uh, Mrs. Kiriakou has worked some real magic here. She has. She's got a personal touch in every single corner of this restaurant. I mean, you walk in your salary, you know, it's, it's her, it's her baby. Um, I gave her card launch and, you know, she had, she had help with some designers, you know, but it's her personal touch and I'm so proud of her, you know, she's done really well. And rightly yeah. so. Right, we're reopening. You know the menu as well as anybody outside of David. Uh, he's uh, given us a couple of insights. If you look back over the model time, is there a particular dish or one or two that really found a way into your culinary heart? You know, I always, you know, it's been on the menu since the beginning, the bar sirloin. It's just a beautiful meal. I love having it in the bar or, you know, it's sliced up. It's got the, the, the rocket on top. It's really beautiful. You know, for me, it's a go-to meal. I just love it. You know, it's one of those standard, it's been on the menu since the beginning and I love it. That's my... It's, a, it's an unfortunate answer because I've narrowed it down to 18 dishes I want to order. It's now 19 <laughs> dishes on my list for dinner this evening, uh, which just means I'll have to keep coming back. And, and that's an important part of the Marvel story. David said as much, the people who keep coming back. Okay. And in a, a city that maybe not as much as Cape Town, but Johannesburg can still be a little fickle when it comes to restaurants yes. and attendance and the flavor of the month now, but not so much in a few weeks time there's been a remarkable consistency to the food to the service to the experience but to the people who just keep coming back to celebrate what you do and they love coming back i mean we we, we stick to our guns we give the service that people love and come to expect from marble david's the cashier on the plate he loves the kitchen and you can see how much love he puts on the plate and people feel it it's not something that you can you know, you know people walk in there and they they feel the the love that you, you know, from the decor to the food to the wine that Vickers brings, you know, everything's curated for people's pleasure. And that's what I enjoy. And that's what I see. Your relationship with David extends beyond just him in terms of staff. I, I get a real family feel. 
And in order to fairly big restaurant like this, that's not always the case. I, I never feel like I'm in a business here. I feel like I'm in a restaurant being looked after by a family. That's it. Uh, smiles, engagement, but just uh, the, the vibe, which is a terrible word, but I use it nonetheless. It's just always really upbeat here. Yeah, you, you can't recreate that. It has to come from within, you know. You know, people do feel it. We are emotional creatures, and people feel that when they're walking there. They feel our relationship with David, our relationship with the food, with, with the staff. It all comes together, and I think we've achieved that. Four years down the line, and we're still doing it. It's a remarkable story, and if, if I sound like I'm a little gushing about Marble, I make no apology <laughs> whatsoever. It's just been so good to get back here to see familiar faces to see the surrounds and to prepare for my first night out. My wife's joining me for dinner this evening, our first date night in about six months. It is a date night that will be accompanied by wine. The conversations you and I have had over a souvlo or two in celebration of Greek wine uh, being ones that are particularly cherished because I think we both understand just how big a stride the Greek wine industry has taken. Ahead, but yeah. we're, we're focusing very much on South African wine at the moment, also like the restaurant industry, a world that's in a little bit of trouble at the moment. So we've got two great glasses here. This is some Storm Pinot Noir. Uh, the uh, the wine palette, is it, has it always been something that you, you've been fond of, that you've enjoyed? I've always or been it? fond of wine. I mean, it's it's one of my I, I thought it was too expensive having a cellar at home so i thought let me just rather open a restaurant and i can have the biggest <laughs> cellar in, at my disposal so <laughs> it's actually cheap having a, a cellar <laughs> and what, what about the sort of wine that you like oh i do i love the shiraz shiraz is one of my favorites is it a great thing because my wife's obsessed with shiraz i love shiraz i just go down to it with food with, with meat just one of those go-to variants that i really love There'll be some on the menu. This is a little lighter. We're starting off some Storm Pinot Noir, one of the uh, quiet success stories the Hemel Nada Valley, presented by Vickers. And uh, if David is a great asset in the kitchen, how about Vickers in the cellar? Oh, he, he loves it. He's a huge asset to, to, to Marble, and he really understands South African wines more than anything else. He's got a good palate. You know, like, and I, I trust him. So I need a good wine. Just, yeah, he's, he's one of the very few people when I arrive here for dinner or if he happens to be at the same time there, I'll push the, most times I just push the wine list aside to surprise me. Give me something nice. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. He, he really knows it. Yeah. Uh, with his, uh, and his engagement brilliance as well. Uh, before we let you go, because uh, as you can see from the all black outfit, Gary runs security and yeah, he's got a busy night ahead of him. At the door. Indeed. Uh, again, a question I asked David that I will ask you as well. The restaurant industry has had a very, very tough time. You are back on your feet for now. You've reopened, but there's still a long road ahead for you and a very long road ahead for South African restaurants as a whole. For those that are still open, how upbeat is Gary Kiriakou feeling at the moment? Well, I think also, I mean, the industry, not just South Africa, but I think worldwide needed a bit of a, a readjustment, a, a shake up. Um, um, but I, you know, if you are top of your game, and you know the restaurants that are committed to what they were supposed to do, and service and the food, and give that, that commitment and passion into the industry, they will succeed. I see a lot of opportunity. Um, I think people coming out of this huge lockdown of six months have also reassessed their lives, and they want more hospitality, and they're more. I think they're more demanding now on what they want. They understand more what they want in life and in food and in going out. So I think the opportunities, and I'm very happy. I'm not just to sit back and say, hey, but I, I'm, I'm positive. We need more sentiment like that. Uh, Gary, thank you. One thank last you. one uh, before you sidle off to glare at people trying to get in without reservations. The other restaurant opens tomorrow. Very different space. Also, all eclectic decor, the Italian menu, uh, another raging, raging success. Kicks off tomorrow, also, is that another really exciting chapter in your shared story with David? Oh, you know, it's, it's we just spaced it out over two days, you know, just the openings, and it's more of a I would say Italian, easy eating, dining out restaurant. So, you know, there, there's something for everyone. So, we're really excited to be opening a sister restaurant tomorrow. And yeah, let's give it a go and see what happens. It's, it's very exciting. As a reward for joining me on Dan Really Likes Wine, presented by Pick and Bay, I will leave you with my very favorite Greek joke that I made up all on my own. Now, if you're not Greek, you're not going to understand okay, this. But you just you laugh at orchestra because it's hilarious. <laughs> what does a Greek farmer call his favorite cow? Nico.
A rapi moo. For those who didn't get it. <laughs> oh dear, Gary, cheers, it's lovely to be back. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for me. having me on uh, the show. I'll ask if you don't mind uh, if you see a beard of Derek Kilpin to I know punch him my way. Let me grab him quickly. Uh, we'll have him. Uh, oh, thank cheers, you so thank much for joining the evening. Cheers, cheers. So that's Gary Kiriaku together with David Higgs, the co owner of both Marble and Saint, giving us some proprietors' in, uh, introspection and perspective as we await the new uh, uh, the new lease of life for both Marvel and St. Helen, particularly Marvel tonight. I see uh, Beverly Kroll sending out a message. She'd love to come and try the restaurant. Uh, also a message from Angelique Kouvalakis, uh, who is Greek, as you can see by the surname. Ha, 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 Dan. That is hilarious. It is indeed. Uh, if you are Greek, you're probably falling off your chair at the moment at the uh, sheer hilarity of my Greek humor. And uh, yeah, just great to see so many of you joining us. We did mention Greg Sherwood a little earlier. And Greg, we are hoping to have Derek Kilpin with us in just a moment, the man behind Great Domains. A reminder of the rest of the week, Thursday's live tasting. Well, that comes to you from Cheetah Plains in the Kruger National Park. And I'll be sampling some wine from Wurkenhardt's Cliff Gottfried, the winemaker, joining me there. Some of their 2015 Cab Sav and some of their Semillon. And we'll also be trying some of the Lou Passant range that the Mullineaux make. So Andrea will be joining us, uh, the uh, current head of the Cape Winemakers Guild. In fact, as I say this, I think I can see over my shoulder the impeccably attired Mr. Derek Kilpin sauntering into shot with the look of a career bachelor. Come and join me here, Mr. Kilpin. Uh, I think we've got some wine coming in as well from Vickers. No idea. I think this, just by the look of it, this looks Kiermontish, but we'll have. Uh, We'll check in a moment. Let me have uh, the last taste. Um, uh, before I say goodbye to this and uh, say a warm welcome to you, uh, I've got some uh, some storm pinot noir here. Oh, this is that very Gary's, nice Gary's wine. That was Gary's choice. Nice. You did promise me a bottle of Romani Conti this evening to celebrate the opening of Marble, but <laughs> he settled for the storm in the end. So. <laughs> but welcome. Lovely to have you Dan. back on Dan Really Likes Wine. You're a, uh, a regular supporter, which we're most appreciative. Um, and I was trying to work it out. There seemed to be some confusion on last night's show with Duncan Savage, uh, news of shopping for jewellery and perhaps a little uh, celebration. Uh, can, can we smooth out the details there? Yeah, so all probably just your and Duncan's weak attempt at a, at a really bad <laughs> joke. But uh, no, nothing, no, no extra news. We. Uh, <laughs> Carrying on as normal. When, when the news breaks, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, we have we have much to celebrate, uh, nonetheless, because a uh, restaurant that's not just a South African icon in four short years, but one of our favourite. You know, I spent a lot of time here, both together and separately, is back open. And for me, it's both Marble itself is open, which is fantastic. Uh, but I, I feel it's also quite an important step for the Johannesburg restaurant scene. It's a, a beacon and a, a flag is being raised. Yes, we're coming back. Yeah, I mean, I think the the big thing is we it, it had a huge impact for everyone in the wine trade, and I think this this sort of hub is is a, is now become the almost the hub of fine wine in Johannesburg. And Vickers, who I think has already been on, um, this is the place where a lot of new people are getting exposed to all the best of South Africa's wines, foreign wines, and to have that sort of off the table for the last five months has been disappointing. Um, I think for everyone, you know, involved. So just to be back here at the bar having a drink, uh, you can feel the energy and sort of the wine's going to start flowing again, which is, I think, important for, for Joburg and selfishly for me. Well, I was, was going to say exactly that because the the link between the drinking of wine and the having it at restaurants is people like yourself who are in that supply chain. We've already spoken to David and Gary about the impact it's had on the restaurant, spoken to Vickers about the wine industry. What about somebody like yourself with great domains? You're supplying these sorts of restaurants. Suddenly they're shut for five months and we're not allowed to buy any wine at all for a vast stretch of those five months. That's not making your business terribly happy. No, well, I think the, what, what we've been lucky from the point of view that a large part of the business is, is directed towards private consumers. And we've got a few very key trade outlets, one of them obviously being Marvel. And and yeah, that was that that's been really tough for us to have that taken off the table. But I think we've been lucky to lucky in the sense that we've been able to keep the business going with all of our private clients. And then a lot of the wines that we're selling are wines that 
not all of them are going to be drunk the next day. So people are quite happy to buy a few bottles or a case of the wine and say, you know, I delivered after lockdown because I wasn't going to drink it anyway, and uh, it's going to it might might even taste a bit better because it had, had a few extra months aging. So, uh, but yeah, it's been it's been that's it's been tough, but I think it's we've we've managed. There have been some interesting markers in the wine industry, particularly the uh, the day after the first lockdown and every single logistics company in South Africa collapsed in a heap as 10 million cases of wine tried to go out. But we suddenly saw people buying new wine and, and often buying better quality wine than I might have imagined. The price points seem to be higher from the retailers I spoke to and the, to the distributors, uh, but also people almost getting the sense of wanting to invest a bit more and take a bit more care of their sellers and appreciate what they have a little more. Is, is that a fair reflection? Yeah, I think so. I think firstly people ended up uh, for us the, the big thing was that people end up spending more time at home obviously and they started to sort of suddenly okay i'm not traveling overseas or on a business trip and they started to open their eyes to these wines that they had kindly bought from us over the last few years and i was like oh well so i started to get these whatsapps saying what's this vintage drinking like or what's this wine like and they started to suddenly engage with their sellers so that was a huge positive um, not necessarily from filling the gaps or anything, but just starting to experience the wines, kickstarting conversations about certain wines from other regions in the world. So that was that was really positive. And then I think there was obviously the spin-off with South Africa and supporting South African wine, where a lot of the people have been amazing with that in terms of, okay, let's get stuck in. They might have maybe bought usually a six bottles of wine, and now they're maybe buying 12 bottles of wine. So that also sort of helped to fulfill some of the gaps over the months that we were sort of not doing doing too much from a sales point of view. I want to come to South African wine and South African wine that you look after in a moment because we have some of it here and I've just had a glimpse of the nose and it's fabulous already. Uh, but very quickly, the international wine, you bring in the majority of the French in particular wine that we see in South Africa, uh, Italian and uh, a bit of Spanish, a few other oddities that make up the great domain's portfolio. Uh, it's a two-part question. The, the South African appetite for these international wines, or what is it like? And then now as we sit in this uh, post-lockdown space when there's this hugely South African sentiment, are you seeing we're selling lots of our South African wine, but maybe not quite so much of our international? Yeah, well, I think the, certainly now, but it was in terms of the second question, was uh, there's a lot more of that support South Africa and that, that we've at the timing's been great because lockdowns ended as a lot of our South African producers have um, uh, released their wine. So we've had Duncan Savage who you chatted to the other night, Donovan Rahl, we had Ebert Sandy released. So it's all happened sort of post lockdown. So I think the sort of spirit and the atmosphere has been been great in terms of people saying, okay, well, give us, give us. So I think all the producers have been quite surprised as to the uptake. Uh, with the new releases, which has been which has been awesome, um, so that's that's been a huge positive. So for the moment, touch wood, it's it's, it's gone well. And then in terms of the foreign, um, the sort of sales and the P and what the original question was, um, I think that what has happened in South Africa and it's it's places like Marble, it's, pla it's people like you, uh, you who've sort of really exposed more of what wine is about and, and 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 contributed to sort of the education of wine as a whole not just south africa um that has sort of led people towards more saying i love south africa i'm patriotic i'm gonna buy south african wine but you know what i really love wine so selfishly i'm also going to experience what happens outside of our borders uh, and i think that's been the main thing as people have got sort of more educated and more exposed they're more willing to experiment with with wines from outside of south africa and we sort of we've got a foot in both camps which is the patriotic side which is buy south african and buy the best if you can and then at the same time the selfish sort of wine side if you love wine you should be trying to drink wines from all over the world to have fun with and, and, and broaden your palate. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take issue. I know what you're saying, it, but I'll take issue with you using the term selfish. So I don't think it is at all. I think part of our broader wine education is understanding. And for me, one of the great things is I'll try a bottle of Rioja, or I'll try a great bottle from Chateau Neuf de Pape or uh, some Beaujolais, and I'll love them. But it, nine times out of ten, 
reminds me of just how good our South African wine is because it's often a particularly good bottle from one of those countries. And it says to me, well, okay, this is, it's got a particular palate or nose or flavor. It's great in its own right, but I've also got great wine from South Africa that I broaden my wine education and that's so important. No, well, I think that's, that's exactly it. And I always say that one of the big things with um, certainly on the foreign side of things is with our, some of the South African producers and, and it's, it's a bit of a generalization, but a lot of the, the South African producers that I think are making some of the best wine are some of the producers that drink the most widely. These are, these are wine, I mean, if you go into Yabin Saadi's wine cellar, you will see wine from all over the world in his cellar, and there's a depth of vintages. That's because he wants to just experience it, to know, not to copy, but to experience it and to understand what goes on in the world and enjoy it and then also maybe borrow some of the philosophies from those places so i think that that's important oh. great domains bringing in wine from all over the world and for me the great thing is you drink some of their wine uh, particularly from a country like france and you realize how well france is coming along and really starting to hit the lower end of south african wine with some of it romani contis and uh, uh chateau petrus etc uh we've got a wine from you that's not from france it is from a little closer to home uh, uh, this is Kiermont. We had Alex on the show with you uh, yeah. a few months back. Um, already getting a sumptuous nose on this. It's lovely, rich fruit, all sorts of things coming in. Uh, tell us a little bit about this wine and a little bit about the uh, uh, about the estate. Yeah, well, I think this is this is one of those other great examples of what's going on in South Africa. This is an estate with not a, a long, long history, but um, amazing winemaker Alex Terry. I was in fact at school with Alex. Um, and they've just sort of honed in on a really special part of Stellenbosch up on the Blau Clippen Road, just, just below De Trafford and after Waterford. And it's a, it's a great place for, this is obviously the Shiraz. Um, and they've got some Merlot there, some really old wine Shannon, which is very exciting. And he's just sort of this uh, very understated winemaker. I always call him sort of the... They call him the Hoofsian, the head of house or the head of school. You know, he doesn't do anything wrong, but he knows exactly what he's doing on the wine side. And um, this is, as I say, you pull a cork on something like this, which is, this is the, I think, the 2015. Um, so it's really got five years worth of age. And it's none of that. I always just sort of remember some of those, the, sh the Shirazes that came from South Africa or that come from South Africa that were very smoky and almost extracted. And this has got all that, this has got all that stuff that I like about what's going on in South Africa, which is delicacy. It's got perfume, but it's also got the structure that you would get from a, a Stellenbosch Shiraz, but not something that's sort of overdone or um, over oaked or anything. It's, like a, it's almost a slight anomaly in terms of the, the, the wine of this the grape that you get out of Stellenbosch, very happily so. Uh, a lot of people watching, very grateful for it. Uh, I see uh, uh, Jess von Onselen uh, suggesting that Olga de Polga and uh, Daniel Janks join in, and uh, Olga wants to book, so uh, we hope to see you here. Skulk Stapelberg saying, never been to Marvel, but on the list when in Kharteng province again, an educational epicenter there, it seems, and most certainly is Skulk, and uh, you'd absolutely love it. Uh, and then Cross Halls is watching over on YouTube at the moment. Harry from Great Domains, is awesome with his Bordeaux recommendations. The uh, thing I love about the Great Domains guys, Grant, is that I learned something from every single time. In fact, uh, even this evening, uh, uh, with Derek telling me that he went to school with Alex from Kermont, I didn't know that Derek had been a teacher. So uh, something else I've learned tonight. Uh, and then Grant also asking, can you tell us more about the judgment of Napa taking place in October this year? Do you know much about that? I actually don't. Um... Tell us more, Grant. Yeah. I'm assuming it's linked to the, the, the judgment of Paris of Paris in the 70s with Mr. Spurrier. Mm -hmm. where, the where judgment I'm, of Paris of 2001. <laughs> the great the judgment Pinotage of tasting. Paris could be very interesting yeah. with some Pinotage. But I'm <laughs> guessing it's sort of a, some sort of a rehashing of, of what they did in Paris when obviously, I think it was Chateau Montalina was the wine that uh, that literally put, put Napa in America on the map, I suppose, when they took out some of the more illustrious uh, French names in a, in a big tasting. And that's also what made Stephen Spurrier so, so, so famous, I suppose. So I'd be keen to know some more. Well, uh, we'll look up some information if you're watching on Thursday when we're up at Cheetah Plains 
for the live tasting of Pocanauts Club and the Mullen News. I'll try to have some more information for you then, Grant. Uh, we've got one last guest to come on to the show. Uh, as I said earlier, he's dressed like John Travolta in Greece. Uh, he's the man behind the Joe Berg foodie empire, making and breaking restaurants quicker than a pandemic. Uh, so we'll send Derek <laughs> off to find him. But uh, uh, Derek, thank you. And uh, if I can ask you just here, one last piece of information before we say goodbye. Uh, and it's, uh, it's one of those kind of tabloid pieces that you always have at a restaurant like this the most expensive wine in the cellar. It is one of yours. If I decide to buy a bottle of Romani Conti tonight, what's that setting me back? Well, seeing as though you know the owners, they might give you a half-decent deal on it, but I actually have no idea what it's on the menu, but I'm, I'm sure it's about, it's probably about 250,000 Rand a bottle, <laughs> um, which technically is a good price if you know what it costs to retail. But yeah, I mean, difficult to say that with that sort of that sort of money. Right. But it's uh, it's your last day on earth type of wine. Um, but uh, with a bit of luck, um, <laughs> we'll have it someday. But not tonight, I don't uh, think. Well, look, if you're watching in South Africa, two hundred fifty thousand rand, no ridiculous, set it aside. Uh, but if you're watching this in the UK, where two hundred fifty thousand rand is a hundred pounds, then you're absolutely fine. Fly over and drink shoot it, over. Yeah. Come and drink. Uh, Derek, thank you so much. Lovely Cheers to have Dan. you. And uh, we'll Always see you at the bar for a drink a little later. Always good to be here. Cheers, so Cheers everyone. And if you can send Steve our way when you find him. So there we go. Uh, that is the man behind Great Domains, Derek Kilpin. Uh, give us a look at some Kiermont. Mmm, it's just a richness of marzipan to that. Mmm. And uh, I don't dislike the style that Derek was speaking of. Maybe not a wine that's too over extracted, but that big Shiraz for which Stellenbosch has got so many wonderful examples. Kevin Arnold always comes immediately to the mind. Got the Gravel Hill out of Hartenberg uh, being two of many examples. It's a really great big style of wine, uh, but this slightly lighter Syrah style, it doesn't fall away in terms of its strength or its depth as a wine, um, but there's just a little bit more elegance to it and it's a little gentler and it works really, really, really well. Uh, best thing is just buy a bottle of each and, and do some comparative work. Uh, so great to see so many of you with us. This is the official opening, uh, reopening of Marvel. I was here for the opening four years ago and now back as it comes. Uh, it comes back from a really difficult stretch. It's been lovely to see so many of the staff here. Have David Higgs with us right at the start of the show. He's now in the kitchen watching everybody else do all of the work you know, as opposed to his last few months, which has just been uh, him on his phone on Instagram, cooking up a storm and giving us a, a wonderful, wonderful time. Also, lovely to see Vickers and lovely to see Gary. And great to have Derek Kilpin with us. We wrap up, though, with one of the most influential men in the food industry, uh, and I'll get him uh, to make his way into shot, uh, like a Beverly Hills 90210 Extra. Have a look at that look hey, tonight. Hey, Dan, Steve how you doing? It's been a while. It's been a minute. It's far too long. In fact, we were actually, well, I was just going to say to you, I arrived and you weren't sitting in the wine cellar or under a cellar. Uh, Gary and David would have yes. had the most FOMO over the last five months. But you must be a very close third because this is not your second home, this is your home. Yeah, I, I generally spend more time here than at home oh, in, thank you, in the world before lockdown. Because, yeah, I'm very happy to be back in you know, a beautiful space, beautiful people. And, yeah. Quick reminder, Steve Steinfeld is the Joburg foodie who's followed by all but seven people in all of South Africa and uh, gives us a wonderful insight into many, many items, not all of them linked to Nespresso. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's just a fabulous, fabulous, tonight. <laughs> fabulous conduit into the world of food. Uh, I was saying to Derek just a moment ago, I'm delighted that this is reopened. Marble is one of my favorites, one of your favorites. Yeah. And just in the restaurant itself, that's fantastic. But I always feel like it's a benchmark for the broader Johannesburg food world. Marble is open. The flags have been raised. We're fighting our way back. 100%. And I mean, for the longest time, four years now, um, I've been saying that, and it's true, I think you know, very few people will refuse my claim, but that David and Gary revolutionized what it meant to be a Joburg restaurant. And instead of taking a concept or idea that perhaps works in Cape Town or somewhere else, they created a space and a philosophy in a way that is just quintessentially made for the Joe Burger. And I mean, you can see it tonight. I think it's, it's exciting to be back. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> we spoke about the regulars who come back early and, and David and Gail spent most of tonight. Basically, everyone uh, has been in your <laughs> video so far. <laughs> right. but, but just in terms of the, the people who just come and dine here, and yes, you get the person who's here on holiday or comes once a year for an anniversary. 
but the percentage of return clientele for this restaurant it must be significantly higher than most. I'd say so, especially when you look at um, in terms of fine dining, you know, or that kind of bracket. And it's because I think the food is just easy. It's accessible. It's delicious, and you can come for a three course meal. You can come for an eight course, and I think that is this appeal to a lot of people. Is that yes, it's about the meal, but it's also about everything else. It's about being in a beautiful space, beautiful music, beautiful wine. Um, it's, I, I would say it's probably one of the most well curated spaces in the world. We watch awards, and I look at the, the Eat Out Awards being a prime example, uh, where the Johannesburg restaurants aren't banned from entering, but we don't tend to see uh, a huge number in the list. And uh, that's not to downplay the quality of the restaurants, chefs we have in the Cape. Uh, Cape Town is awash with guys who can make it anywhere in the world. But you generally feel that Johannesburg has has been playing catch up for a while now. Is it fair to say that Marble and Saint? have been at the fore of closing that gap considerably? So I don't know if they're closing the gap because they're very different to a fine dining setting. And um, fine dining is not Joburg's calling. We, we aren't about, you know, being quiet in a room, having, you know, gentle music playing. You in having, particular? Well, you know, everyone, really. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not how Joburg responds to food. So it is very difficult to have a fine dining restaurant in Johannesburg that does cook at that level. Um, so yes, I think, Marvel tends to definitely making waves in terms of redefining food in the South African context and how we enjoy it. Um, it's a bit difficult to comment on awards, but you know, Dan's <laughs> uh, favorite game is let's lose deep friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being very, very diplomatic there, uh, Steve. Yes. You've eaten here more times than most. What dish are you most looking forward to finding on the menu, provided it's still there? So that's the interesting thing, and I couldn't pinpoint. You know, when I'm saying I can't wait to get back to Marvel, it wasn't about what dish I was going to have. It was more about I want to be in Marvel. And I think it's such a testament to the space we're in and the experience, the whole experience of it. Because whatever you have, whatever dish you have, it's all complemented by everything around you. I hope the octopus starter is still there. It was a um, dish that came about from a collaboration with Joe Barza. It's one of my favorite dishes on the menu. And if that's on the starters, I'm definitely going for that. So speaking of Joe Barza, if you want to do something to support a different part of the world, there's some Chateau Moussa on the menu here, and gee, could uh, could Lebanon use a little bit of support at the moment? We love support them. We're also supporting South Africa. We're supporting with some Cup Classy. Today is International yes. Cup Classy Day. I, know, I have to get my surprise underway. Which I was going to ask you about, because I know it's 6 o'clock, and uh, we're done here. You can jump straight over to the Steenberg Instagram page, where uh, Ilunda Basson will be wheeling a sabre, and a sabrage is the French word for to behead with elegance, which is exactly what you'll be doing. She can do it with a saber. Am I right in saying that I've seen you do it with a credit card? I've done it with a credit card. I've done it with another wine bottle. I've done it with a spade. Um, I, I've done it with pretty much everything, you know, except the saber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's a, it's a great day to celebrate. And you know, we're celebrating here at Marvel very happily. So celebrating great food, great friends all being together. Um, also, in the case of this, celebrating South African Capital Seek. And it's just another example of a style of wine that South Africa has taken and shown the world, it's you know, we're, we're actually pretty good at this. 100%. And I do think it's something that as South Africans, especially now and where we are in this journey, is that in terms of supporting South African wines and wineries, there is nothing wrong with celebrating with MCC. It doesn't have to be champagne. Um, and I think, you know, we have some MCCs that I say are better than some champagnes. And I think it is such a beautiful celebration wine, you know, whether it is Le Louvre or something like Stenberg's, um, you know, a whole range of that. Here. But and it's and it's a space to explore. This uh, this lewd is incredibly crisp. It's uh, quite a sharpness to it, yeah. but on a bad way. Um, it's just uh, beautifully done together as a uh, as a rosé. And if we look, I'm a big fan of Charles Fox, uh, but we've got so many of them. We do so well in South Africa, yeah. um, as we do with, with so much in this food and wine space. You know that better than most. So before we let you head off to your eleven course dinner at Marvel with a bottle of wine to accompany yes. each dish. Sure, yeah. A very similar question to the one I asked David, to the one I asked Gary, to Vickers. The South African food and wine industry has taken a battering. We've seen a, a number of mutual friends lose yeah. their restaurants. Uh, we're not in the, the best of spaces. How upbeat is the Joburg foodie feeling about Joburg in particular and South Africa as a whole? So 
I think we've got a really tough road ahead of us. And I think um, it's quite imperative that consumers realize that there is a part for them to play in this. It can't just all be on the restaurants. Um, if we look at things like social distancing requirements or, you know, just sanitizing, I just urge everyone to kind of do their bit to allow restaurants to get back on their feet because we're not in a good space. I don't think anyone can optimistically say so. I think we're definitely in a better space than we were the last time we spoke and we were drinking non-alcoholic wine. <laughs> remembered fondly. Remembered, remembered fondly, very fondly. <laughs> but I, I, I think that um, we're not out of the woods yet, and I hate to be the one to be the downer in the situation, but I think we've got a really, really rough few months ahead of us. Um, Cape Town's out, especially one season's over. Hopefully the tourism will open in time for Cape Town to get some of that tourism flow in, because that's what a lot of their dining relies on. And Joburg, yeah, we'll be okay, but I think there's a long way to go, and I think we're not afterwards yet, so keep supporting Joburg restaurants. Indeed. Final one for you. You know the wine list almost as well as you do the menu. Uh, something a little different, a little quirky. If somebody's coming along to Marble post-lockdown, what should they be ordering? What should they be ordering? Water Coast seriously cool sensor. Really, you know, great value wine. It's absolutely delicious. I know you've had Nadia on the um, Dan really lots of wine recently. And I think it's a great um, food wine too. It's nothing too serious. It's a lot of fun. I think it's perfect for one of these evenings. As actually is Le Louvre in terms of being a food wine. Mm -hmm. And I think people often overlook champagne when they're wine pairings. And especially a wine uh, champagne like this. It does have that structure to even go up against perhaps a steak, maybe. Maybe some of Marvel's legendary fries. Um, I really think that MCC in particular is overlooked mm -hmm. when it comes to being a food wine. And this from a man who has two glasses of Cup Classique for breakfast every day before he dons his leather jacket and sets <laughs> off onto the culinary You're horizon. Really to wear it again, John. <laughs> uh, Steve, thanks so much for being part of the show. It is always a pleasure. A couple of last words there. Grant Souls uh, saying the Miles Mossop wines are excellent. Definitely had Miles on the show not that long ago. Also giving Waterford thumbs up. Some of the best. Uh, Kevin Arnold is an absolute genius. And Dalla Chia, well, the man who was behind the initial Mirlas Rubicon. Uh, so some good calls there, Grant, who has been a very generous man. He's helped out a lot of charities during the course of lockdown and is a good supporter and friend of the marble space. Uh, and that wraps us up. So uh, not just Steve, but uh, uh, to David Higgs, to Gary Kiriakou, the uh, joint owners here at Marble, to Vickers Human, the head sommelier, and to Derek Kilpin, from Great Domains, who supplies all of the international wine, plus some of the locals. Yeah, it's been a, a lovely evening. I'm going to head off, find my table, and order 11 courses of food, just like Steve, and celebrate the reopening of one of my very favorite restaurants. Remember to join us on Thursday. I'll be at Cheetah Plains in the Kruger National Park, trying some book and hearts with with Gottfried, and joining the Muller News for some of their Lure Passant and celebrating their new Rangers. And we'll also on Thursday be announcing the winner of that Banho Cabernet Sauvignon competition. Somebody will be off to stay at Bartony and enjoying tastings at Dele Graaf and at Oldenburg. Thank you for joining us. If you're not already a member, please do join up at our Pick and Play Wine Club. Great opportunity uh, to get some fantastic, fantastic awards and some terrific South African wine at a really good price with 10 wines each month at a special discount. Thanks to a wonderful group of guests. I'm off to hit the restaurant. Uh, from all of us here at Marble, headlined by John Travolta's son here. Have a great evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Really Likes Wine. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.